Previously on The Bill. DS Max Carter, this is DC Terry Perkins. Oh. Didn't know the station was running a crash. This is Beth Green. It's her first day. Why did you kick CO19 in the touch? Took out two targets. Missed the headline potential. So thanks you get for doing your job. Arrested late last night in possession of half a kilo of skunk. Refused to brief, refused to talk to anyone except you. Katie Taylor. I pulled her for soliciting one night. It was freezing and there wasn't a punter around for miles. I bought her a cup of tea, I gave her a good talking to and I escorted her home. She must feel she can trust you. Why couldn't it have been that fit footballer I cautioned last week? <laughs> Look, it wasn't my fault. Look, Katie, I'm really sorry, but there's nothing I can do. CPS will evaluate the case and decide whether or not it goes to court. Oh, I can't go up in front of a judge again. I'll go to jail. I'll lose Johnny. Oh, look, I remember what you said, that I could be a mother, I could be a junkie, but I couldn't be both. A good advice. You should have taken it. I'm not using. I cleaned up, just like you said. I'll take tests. Anything. Yeah, but that doesn't excuse dealing. I had no choice. But I need your help. Maybe we could do a deal, yeah? If I help you get him. To get who? My supplier. I'll give you my drug supplier. Over the last six months, 70% of all the cannabis seized in Canada has been skunk. And that's double last year's figure. Now, typically, it's two or three times stronger than ordinary cannabis, which means it has a, a THC content of 40% plus, whereas ordinary cannabis is only 15%. Oh, if it's widely distributed, we may as well build a wall around Canley and call it the London Asylum. Now, we don't know where it's coming from, but there's a possibility of breaking into the distribution network. It's this guy, Craig McKee. He's got form for dealing, handling stolen goods, ABH, burglary, and he's now graduated to become a major distributor of skunk. Now, one of his dealers has agreed to introduce an undercover officer to him. Beth. Katie Taylor is a former addict and prostitute. She's terrified of McKee. He claims that he supplies her with half a kilo of skunk every fortnight. He doesn't care what she does with it as long as she's paying him. He intimidates people into dealing for him. Now, Kate has agreed to help in the hope of getting a more lenient sentence. There's a party tonight in Greenford Way in a derelict building. McKee is going to be there supplying, and she reckons she can get us in. Us being? Well, Beth will be going with Kate to the party. She's going to be introduced to somebody who's interested in doing a bit of dealing. Beth? Undercover? Well, what about Kezia, someone from CRD? No. I'm up for it, Sarge. All I have to do is get him to offer me drugs, and then we can nick him. What about the half kilo skunk that we caught Katie with? Well, at the moment, we're going to have to give it back to her. I don't like it any more than you do, but if Katie goes back to McKee empty-handed, he's going to get suspicious. OK, this is a joint uniform CID operation. Nikki, Max, I'd like to brief you in my office. Thank you, everybody. Look, Beth, are you sure you want to do this? There's plenty of other people who'd be happy to do it. No, I'm sure. I don't want to spend my whole life patrolling, do I? Beth's too young. Too inexperienced. This party will be stuffed full of low lowlifes. A lot depends on Katie Taylor not losing her nerve or making a mistake. I just think there's too many things can go wrong. Beth's the same age as Katie. She'll be believable as her friend. And she's already got Katie's trust. Look, I think Beth can do it. I think we should give her a chance. <sighs> I want her wearing a wire. First sign she's out of her depth, we're going mob-handed and stuff the consequences. And I want to talk to Katie Taylor. Fine. Hi, Katie. I'm DC Joe Masters. This is DS. Why now? What? Uh, you could have given Craig McKee up any time. Why now? I explained all this. I don't want to lose my son. Don't look at her. Look at me. What's his problem? Look at me. Sarge. I don't care about you or your son. I do care about my officer going undercover and your say so. If you're lying, if you bottle it, if you expose her to danger in any way, you'll not only lose your kid, I'll make it my mission to ensure the next time you see him, he'll be an adult. Are we clear? Look at me. Look at me. Are we clear? Yes. Good. Sarge, I didn't think we did good cop, bad cop anymore. She's really frightened of you now. Exactly. 
I want her more scared of me than she is of Craig McKee or anyone else at that party tonight. Beth will be safer that way. Yes, Grace? I've recorded the party location. Good. Get them printed up and bring them to the briefing. The party's at the former Brendan House Hotel. And I couldn't get any closer because of squatters. But it looks like there's only one entrance into the building here. The surrounding land is fenced off, but the perimeter has been breached in a few places. OK. We plot up in unmarked cars around the, uh, the area. Uniform a couple of blocks back in an IRV. Oh, hello. <laughs> um, jeans are OK. You need a different top. Different how? I want you looking like someone who goes out on the pool and gets wasted at parties full of drugs and thugs every weekend. Not looking like someone who's off to meet their dad for a pizza. What do you suggest I wear then, Sarge? First rule of undercover work. Stick as close to your real self as possible. Pretend Brad Pitt's going to be at this party tonight and you really, really want him to come and talk to you. Then wear that. Beth needs to feel comfortable, Sergeant Carter. Dressing up like a tart won't make any difference. Brad Pitt's too old for me, Sarge. I'm more of a Jake Gyllenhaal girl. Whatever. Dress for him. And wear this. There's a microphone in the centrepiece. We'll be able to hear everything you say. Soon as McKee offers to sell you drugs, we'll be in. First sign of trouble, we'll be in. Get changed, get Katie. Let's get going. All units from Alpha. Here we go. You sure you're okay for this, Beth? Well, as soon as I'm here and we're dressed. Okay, give us a comms check on the way. Checking us out from behind. How are you doing? But uh, let me just get a good bath, okay? Um, these, these three there. Okay. Hey. Hi. 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 Okay, listen, he's on with a leather jacket on. He's got a skin and he's got... Wow. I haven't seen you before. I remember. Welcome to the party. My name's Lenny. Lenny Jones. Yeah, don't try it, Lenny. She's with me. Listen, then he's one of Craig's friends. Hey, didn't tell me your name. Laura. Well, Laura, let me get you a drink over here and we can raise a glass to do friends, eh? <laughs> so, you know Kate you Long? Know no, not really. That girl's pure trouble. But be safe here with me. Here. Look, don't worry, it's only vodka and coke. Look, I'm not one of those who needs to get a girl drunk before I can interest in a conversation. And I'm not one of those who needs to get drunk before I can have a conversation. Uh, what are they talking about? Who is that? You, apparently. So you said you'd have remembered me if I'd been here before. Why? You have intelligent eyes. You don't see so much on these circles. It's Katie. She went with Craig, I guess. For where? Come on, she's your friend. You know what she's like. A few minutes of dodgy dealing, and she'll be back. Kindly get her. What it is. This is the sound of the darkness of town. I watch at them. Meantime, let's party. We've lost Beth's wire. What the hell is that? It's pirate radio. The FM transmitter on Beth's wire and this station must be on the same frequency. It's corrupting the signal. <sighs> Kathy's lost Beth and we've no way of knowing what's going on there. And Beth doesn't know. We can't hear her. <laughs> Beth's with one of Craig's boys. Katie's with Craig himself. I don't like it. You said first sign of trouble, we'd go in. This isn't trouble. It's a routine complication. You right now? Yeah. Yeah, I'll be back in a minute. Promise? Yeah, I promise. There's a lot more I need to know about you. Yeah? I'll give you half a kid. 
key to shift. I do not expect you to do it at a party. We've already got covered. What? Well, it's cool. Stop me. Put the gun down now. You're scaring the girl. Who are you? I'm Katie's friend. I was looking for her. Someone's got an electronic device switched on. Sorry, it's me. It's my phone. So you're Laura, yeah? Lovely Laura. What can we do for you? You want to make money? You want to get hooked up? I don't know. Maybe both. What have you got? She's all right. She's fine. Hi, this is Beth. Leave a message and I'll get back to you. I'm coming in, Beth. Nobody moves unless I say so. Dear Carter's going in to take a look. He says we're to wait on his call. Well, it's Beth in there. I hope he knows what he's doing. Dear is not much of a one for teamwork, is he? No. I reckon if he thought he could get away with it, he'd put on a wig and a frock himself and have taken Beth's place. Hey, that's what the legs for. Skunk's good. Got some grass if you prefer. Coke, speed, ease, whiz. You've got all that on here. Nice. Pirate radio. Selling drugs on wheels. Leave us. We'll be inside in five. Have a chat then. Yeah, look, come on, Laura. Let's get back to the party, eh? Come on. Katie's still got some business to discuss with us. I'll be in in a bit. Look, love, I told you she's trouble. Let her and Earl do whatever they've got to do. She's not your responsibility. Come on. Well, who is Earl? Earl Clark. But he's the kind of guy your mother warned you about, that's it. What, and you work for him? But I pay Earl to let me broadcast the radio show. That's how these stations work. Why? I record all my broadcasts, I'm editing the best bits together, and hopefully I'll have a demo reel take to national stations. Look, I just DJ for him, yeah? All the other stuff you saw just now has nothing to do with me. Look, this ain't really my scene. Do you want to skip out? Get a beer somewhere quieter? No, I can't leave her on her own. Well, that's the least way inside, eh? You're hardly dressed to be hanging around in the cold. favourite arts in hospital. Aunt Alice. If you like. Tell them you have to go. Hey, everything all right, lass? Right, I'm going to take a walk, clean my head and jump a car. Then I'll walk with you. No, no. Listen, you're lovely, but I need time on my own. Look, your aunt's going to be fine, OK? Yeah, I think you're right. Here's my number. Call me from the talk later, OK? I'm going to ask for mine. Well, you look like a modern kind of girl to me. You'll call first. Look, I can only chase you until you catch me. Taxi, love. Carter would like a word. Your wire went down, Beth. It wasn't your fault. Hang on. It's not just Craig. There's someone even bigger involved. His name's Earl Clark. He's broadcasting a pirate radio show from a truck round the back. He's armed with a handgun and he offered me a whole shopping list of drugs. We need to get in there fast. He's got Katie. All units, go, go, go. Over here, empty. Come there. Come on. All of the 
recorded pockets. Right, young sir, if you uh, wouldn't mind. Thank you, this is my workplace. That is now illegal. of the tape, I'm now showing Mr. McKee exhibit TS1. A quarter kilo of skunk was found in your possession at a party in Greenford Way last night. Where did it come from? Don't remember. Yeah. Skunk will do that to your brain. <laughs> Where did Earl Clark and his truck go to? No idea. You got me in possession of a party bag of blow. Big deal. Charge me, let's move on. I don't know nothing else. Well, we have two independent witnesses, including a police officer, who will testify that you were selling drugs last night. A police officer? Katie Taylor has gone missing, and we have reason to fear for her safety. Now, we can place you in the truck in which she was last seen. If anything has happened to her, you are looking at an aiding and abetting charge on top of possession. I know nothing about the truck. That's Earl's game, pirate radio. I just turn up when he says to make a pickup. So you get your drugs from Earl Clark? No comment. How do you know where the truck's going to be? I don't. I get a call. Where does Earl keep his truck during the day? I don't know. His other kid, Lenny Jones, always hanging around a truck, fancies himself as a DJ. Find him. He knows more about it than me. We arrested four party goers for possession of drugs with intent to supply, including Craig McKee. Now, McKee, in turn, gets his supplies from Earl Clark dealing out of his pirate radio truck. Now, McKee denies all knowledge of the truck's whereabouts. He says that Lenny Jones is the man who can tell us where it is. So, CCTV of the neighbouring streets. The truck left on a back route, but we lost it after a couple of blocks to some cameras that weren't working. I ran the index through PNC. It's false. So what about Katie Taylor? Well, officers visited the flat that she shares with her mum and son. Katie didn't return home last night, and her mobile was going straight through to voicemail. Uh, Tony and Roger are checking the hospitals now. Why did the truck leave? Do you think Katie told Earl we were there? No, I stood in front of him and he believed that I was just Katie's friend. You know, you can set these stages up for about two and a half grand. And they can make double that in a week with advertising and what they charge local DJs for, I suppose. Yeah, Lenny said that, that they charged him to do his show. He also said he had nothing to do with drugs, yet he broadcast from a truck full of them. Well, apart from acting as a front for drug dealing, they also interfere with police, fire and ambulance radio services. So it's critical that we find this truck. There must be a way of locating the broadcast signal. Well, they're in two parts, aren't they? You've got the rig, which is on high ground, then you've got the studio, which is often miles away. Now, when they're on air, we can detect the rig with our detector equipment, and we can seize it and put the station out of action temporarily. Simply taking them off air is no solution. We need to locate the studio. So what do we know about the personalities? OK. Earl Clark, a.k.a. the Dark Destructor. His name sends the databases into overdrive, a record going back 20 years, including a total of nine years in jail on various occasions. If it's dirty and you can make money on it, Clark's had a go. Uh, Lenny Jones, DJs for Nightwatch FM. We ran his photo through Crimmint. No matches. He told me he had nothing to do with the drugs. Oh, oh, well, that's OK, then. I always let suspects go when they say they're not guilty. McKee says... Jones is heavily involved in Nightwatch FM and does know the truck's movements. Grace, can you dig deep on this Lenny Jones? You know, who he is, where he is, what he does when he's not DJing. Oh. Mickey, uh, let's find this Katie Taylor. She's out there somewhere. Mm. Joe, can you liaise with Ofcom? We want one of these detective vans on the streets tonight. Go. You've got Jones's number, right? Yeah. I want a word with you and Max in my office. Sir, if you're thinking of using Beth to contact Lenny Jones, I'd like to sit in on this. Sure. Now, this man Jones, you don't think he's part of the drugs trade? Why? Because if he was dealing, he'd have tried to show it off. Most lads still think that girls go for bad boys. He was protective of me in that truck. Plus, he tried to warn me off Katie. He seems to know that she dealt with McKee and Clark. But he followed you out to the truck. Well, like I said, protective. I understand that you, uh, you kissed each other. No, Laura kissed him, sir, not me. Yeah, well, what I need to know is, is, I mean, this guy Jones, right? He's our best chance of getting near this truck. So you're quite happy to go back undercover and learn what you can from him? But he's nothing to do with it, sir. In your personal opinion. Uh, let PC Green speak for herself, Sergeant Carter. Thank you, Sarge. It's my personal and professional opinion that Lenny is only on the fringes of Earl Clark's world and is not directly involved in drug dealing. 
If we use him to get to Clark, we might be putting an innocent boy in danger. If we don't use him, Katie stays missing and a lot more people suffer at the hands of Clark. Uh, neither of these things are down to Beth. I didn't say they were. No? You haven't exactly been supportive, have you? Right. I'll do it, sir. There's a lot of grey areas in undercover work. Now, you don't have to play this guy, Jones, if you don't want. It's your decision. Well, it might be the only way to find Katie. And it's a chance to prove his innocence. That's not what this is about. Establishing Clark's guilt is. What, because you've made up your mind about Lenny? I'm in. Good. DS Carter will brief you. Sir. Well, you still think she hasn't got the bottle? Go. Max, let's make sure we've made the right decision. Go. I need to talk to you about Clark's gun. Oh. Do you know what the weapon was? Uh, automatic, not a revolver. Other than that, I was a bit thrown by having it in my face, sorry. OK. Uh, let's try something. Why? It won't take long. I need to concentrate. Close your eyes. In what? Trust me. I just need to find out about this gun. In your mind's eye, I want you to go back to last night. Put yourself back in that truck and try and visualise what the gun looked like. OK? All right. OK. Try and remember everything as it was. Where Clark was, where Katie was, the broadcasting equipment. Get to the point now where Clark is pointing the gun at you. OK? Concentrate on the gun. Look at the gun. What colour is it? Silver, grey, black? Black. Good. You're looking at the muzzle. What shape is the casing around the barrel? Round, rectangular? Rectangular. Tapered at the top to the sides. Below the barrel. Can you see a trigger? Or is there a trigger guard? A guard, a trigger guard, and his fingers in it on the trigger. OK. Above the trigger, can you see a safety catch? Yeah, to the right as it faces me. And there's diagonal ridging on the slide above the butt. <sighs> Did it look like that? Yeah. Author P99. German manufactured 9mm semi automatic. 15 round magazine. You don't see many of them on these shores. Until recently. We've recovered half a dozen from gangbangers in the past month. Someone has recommissioned a batch of weapons and made a bad job of it. They're rusted, haven't been stored properly in Greece. Sights are misaligned, the ammo's homemade, at least a tenth of a millimeter out. Means the weapons are more likely to misfire or blow up in the shooter's hands. Good. Bring breakfast with you. It's time to talk to Lenny Jones. Sarge. Right. We need to know how he locates the night watch truck. Where is it tonight? Okay. You ready? He's cute. You liked him. You want to see him again? Hello? Lenny, it's me, Laura, from last night. Hey, Laura. It's that pretty lady. How's it on? Yeah. She's fine, thank God. It was a false alarm. Where are you? At home. Where's home? Play your cards right and I might show you one now. So when are you next DJing on Nightwatch? Tonight. I'd love to see you work. I told you, Laura, those boys are bad news. Stay away. Just listen on the radio, OK? Well, where's the station going to be tonight? Maybe I can meet you later. Easy, girl. What, you ask me out? Depends. What would you say if I was? I'd say meet me at Tajines in Hogston Road. I work there part-time and I'll be finished by six. Sounds good. Cool. You know something else? What? You're a great kisser. You're not too bad yourself. I'll see you at six. Was that your Lenny Jones? I wouldn't call him that. 
Well, can you please steal his wallet? I'm getting nothing on him. There are dozens of Lenny Joneses on the database, and I've got nothing to mark them out with. I've checked any with major criminal convictions, but they're all too old to be our man. Well, we know he's quite a kisser. Don't forget that. <laughs> well, yes, and while not many men fit that description, it still doesn't help me as such. <laughs> right. I'm going to go off and uh, recce the bar, find a good oboe point. You'll wear a wire again tonight, two-way this time. Then you'll know if there's a uh, problem or not. Well done, PC Green. You did really well on that call, PC Green. I believe you when you say he doesn't do drugs, PC Green. Look, I know he does it with all the charm of a piranha fish. But D.S. Carter is only looking to make sure that you're protected. And look what happened yesterday. You ended up in a truck with one of the most dangerous men in Canley and absolutely no way of communicating with us. You're doing really good. Don't be thrown by his attitude. We're all working to cover your back. So just get on with it. And don't expect praise every step of the way. Yeah, thanks. Suspect is on the premises. In you go, Beth. Suspect? What happened to innocent until proven guilty? We've got a good, strong signal now, Sarge. He is innocent until proven guilty. That's why we're calling him a suspect, not the accused. Hello, hello. hello. Right. Yeah, you? Yeah, all good. So you work here? Days only. Keeps the evenings free for DJing. What would you like? A uh, dry white wine, please. Can I do it? So do you DJ on night watch every night? It varies. Look, let's not talk work. Let's talk about you. How's your day? Usual. What's the usual? Stay as close to your real self as possible. Early start. Chocolate and a Coke for breakfast. I really need to stop doing that. I work part-time as a waitress. I hate the uniform. My boss, Max, he's a pain. I think he's got a thing about me. He likes to show me up in front of people. He needs to drink less coffee and eat more roughage. Find out where he lives. Thanks. So do you live around here? No, I'm south of the river, but I'm trying to find a place in Canada. So how do you know where to go to do your show? I call them, they call me, whatever. I'm back until it starts, Samuel. Go on. Well, you're sociable, fun-loving. Smart, lively, quick-witted. You gotta be a Gemini. Wow. Am I right? Yeah, May the 30th. What are you? Good girl. Leo. What date? August 6th. And now you can ask me which year. I bet you're 21. Two. We're down to five possibles. Keep going, Beth. I bet you can't guess my middle name. Hmm. Petunia. <laughs> Doris? <laughs> Agnes? No, I know. Agatha. Yeah. What's yours? Joseph. Joseph. Joe, I like it. Where was he born? So have you always lived in London? My folks moved me here from Birmingham when I was a year old. They're all too old. I think we've got a problem here, Sarge. Beth. Don't react. We have a problem. Everything he says is a lie. He doesn't exist. Lenny Jones is not who he says he is. Young love. Who's that? I've been looking for you, Lenny. Get another glass of wine for the lady, please. I've got no diseases. Oh, Claire. What's he doing here? Yeah. I told you, Jones was in deep with him. We don't know that, Sarge, because Lenny didn't exactly sound pleased to see him. I don't know. Like I'm going down there. Find out if I've got the uniform nearby. Yeah, there's a problem with the rig. I need you to take a look at it. The uh, signal's weak. Maybe the wind blew the aerial out of place. You all right? We'll go and take a look in a bit. What was your name? Laura. Laura, right. Do you want to make some money tonight, Laura? I haven't decided. I wanted to talk to Katie some more first, but she disappeared on me last night. She's not answering her phone. Do you know where she is? Katie? How would I know where she is? Because last time I saw her, she was with you. Yeah. Yeah, she came with when we left the party. 
Katie wanted dropping off down by the Riviera. Last I saw. Sierra Oscar from DS Carter. Information received on Misper, Katie Taylor. Last known sighting was in vicinity of Riviera nightclub post 2100 hours last night. Dispatch uniform to search area ASAP. Heard the place got busted. Didn't you get any hassle from the feds? Busted? No, I, I didn't know. I must have left already. And you? Yeah, I left when Laura left. You were lucky. Lucky, yeah. This thing tonight. Simple. I just need you to move a package from over here to over there. Take you maybe half an hour. I'll give you 200 quid. Better than minimum wage. What's in the package? Medical supplies for a friend of mine. We are. How do I know where to get it? He'll show you. Yeah, yeah, I'll show her. It's cool. Of course, it wasn't complete luck we left when we did last night. The boys can smell a cop from a block away. He told me about this geezer who turned up at the party. Older fella. Dark brown hair. Dresses like someone's dad. Mardy look on his face. I'm gone. I'm going in. Goodbye, Earl. Hello, real Lenny. Thought you said you didn't deal. Have I just been asked to courier drugs for Earl? You have. And I don't. Trust me. Look, it's time Earl got the message. You can't scare people to send drugs for him. I'm going to do something I should have done a long time ago. Leaving with Lenny now, Sarge, heading Glanville Street direction. Don't touch that table. Leave all the glasses there. Please. What do you mean something you should have done a long time ago? Put Earl and Nightwatch out of business. Not go to the police? No, no, look, I had some troubles there before. I just want to do this for myself. Why now? Because I've been looking for the courage to do it. When I saw that look in your eyes just now when you thought I was a dealer, I found it. So what are you going to do? Come with me and I'll show you. Katie Taylor behind the Riviera. We've accompanied her to St. Hughes. Oh. It's all right, love, all right. right, right. We've just got to get you sorted first. What's the assailant is Earl Clark. Can we get someone down from CID to interview Kate, please? She's convinced that Lenny's one of the good guys. Do you think she can trust him? Well, even after him feeding her all those lies. You know, Beth Garth, you think Hannibal Lecter was misunderstood if he said he was sorry? <laughs> what about Kate? Grace is on her way to St. Hughes now to go and talk to her. And do we know where Lenny has taken Beth? Earl asked Lenny to check out a rig for the radio, but... Oh, we don't know where that is yet, do we? No, I've come and looking for it now. You got anything else? Lenny said something about putting Earl Clark and Nightwatch out of business. Do we know why? Not yet, no. Great. So Beth's caught in the crossfire? Yeah. Maybe if I'd been a bit more supportive, she wouldn't have felt the need to prove herself like this. Now, Beth knows the protocol, Max. She shouldn't have gone it alone. Mm. I said what she knows. Beth's gone missing with Lenny Jones. <laughs> Katie. Hello, I'm DC Dastry from Sun Hill. Katie, does old Clark know that Beth is a police officer? It's OK, Katie, you're not in trouble. I guess Earl got suspicious when you guys turned up at that party. No best face was the only one he didn't recognise there. Your colleague said that I'd lose him if I messed up. No, no, Katie, it's not your fault. I didn't tell him. You know, I took this from Al because your sergeant said I'd lose Johnny. I didn't even tell him that, that, that Beth was police, you know? He didn't believe me and he went off to find help for himself. Thank you. Yeah, thanks, Grace. Right, Earl Clark suspects a battery cop. So, wherever she's going with Lenny, wherever night we've got their rig located, it's a setup. 
Well, the question is, does Lenny know that? Is he telling Beth the truth, or is he just saying what she wants to hear to get her there? Joseph Serolina. Lenny Jones's real name is Joseph Serolina. I got his prints from the glass he used at the wine bar. Four months ago, he was arrested for possession of cocaine with intent to supply. Serolina called an ambulance to a suspected overdose on the Ellis estate. A young girl, she later died at the scene. We think, well, we know, he was a courier delivering drugs to the girl that died but it could never be proved. Why is he calling himself Lenny Jones? Professional purposes, it's his DJ name. Right, so he has lied to Beth, not only about who he is, but also about being a dealer. I want another go at McKee, Gav. Sure, you go with him, Nicky. Well, we found Casey Taylor. She's badly beaten, but she's alive and talking. Our officer saw you with her in the truck. That makes you an accessory to kidnapping and assault. And now Earl suspects who our officer is, he's set her up. And if he kills her, that makes you an accessory to murder. I didn't. Oh, what you did and didn't do, we'll decide in court. There's only one thing can help you now. Tell us where Earl Clark keeps the rig for his radio station. Broad Lane Estate. I'll get it on the PR. Wait, wait, wait. There's something else. There's a trap. Smoke. Lifts are out. Earl's diverted the electricity to power his rig on the roof. We're gonna have to take the stairs. 20 flights. This is where Earl keeps his drug stash with the rig. We're gonna destroy both. When I prayed for a fit bloke, this wasn't what I had in mind. The Ofcom detective van has found out that the signal is coming from the park side tower block. Clark booby traps the rig for security. The power he diverts from the elevator is also connected to the door used for roof access. Anyone trying to open the door gets blasted with 240 volts. Friends, you're gonna have to tell me your real name. Hell of a time for a fuse to blow. Lucky for you. Lucky for me, I have a plan B. But let her go, well. Well, this has got nothing to do with Laura. Wrong. It's all about her, because now I know she's a cop. You're a cop? Right, I want a uniform on every floor. Tony, take the stairwell. Roger, can you secure this level? Max Grace, take the lift to the roof. Right, nobody comes in or out of this building without my say-so, right? What have you done to Katie? Well, that was the thing, see? She told me you weren't police. This is what I was wanting to discuss with you today, Jones. But you don't return my calls. I have to come looking for you. And I'll find you all cosy with this girl copy. No, he didn't know I'm police. When I really knew for sure was about ten minutes after I told you I dropped Katie off at the Riviera. Had my boys do a drive-by. They told me the place had just been invaded by feds. So this is where you keep your supplies. Oh, Clark, I'm arresting you for dealing in controlled Class A substances. My understanding is the maximum penalty for dealing Class A these days is life imprisonment. Same as I get for off in a cop, so I might as well shoot. Look, there's no way out of this cell. The police are all around the estate. Lucky I got myself some hostages then, ain't it? That's a war for P99, isn't it? We've seen a few of those around Hanley recently. DC dust ring. Earl Clark's on the premises, believed to be armed. Just put the gun down, Earl! I'm picking you up on the radio again. If you can hear me, say yes. My boss yes. gave me a briefing on them this morning. Yeah, 
Yes, yeah, so we're coming back to me. The sights are misaligned. Oh, I'm on the other side of the door. And there's rust around the slide. They haven't been stored in grease properly. Yeah, Earl, so his back is right up against the door. Yeah, the ammo is probably handmade. Which means it's at least a tenth of a millimetre out. When I say now, you know what that means. I'm going through this door. You've no idea where Earl's going to be. if you pull that trigger, it'll probably blow up in your hand. Your back's up against it, Earl. Now, let's find out. Oh, no! the gun! Hands up! No! Oh! Joe, Joe, don't move at all. Lily okay. Jones has been shot, Gunn. I'm on the way. I was going to broadcast this on the radio. And some of the cops, after I destroyed our stash up here, look, Beth, that's got everything you need to know. Night watch, drugs. Oh. Oh. Tonight's show is dedicated to Laura. When I met you, I knew I was doing the right thing when I decided to make this tape. I've learned a lot sitting beside the Dark Destructor. Earl Clark's his name. Earl's well named. He's destroyed a lot in his time, and he still does every night. Right, well, Lenny lists everything there. Dates, quantities, locations, all of Clark's couriers who we're bringing in now. And although he dealt for Clark, he did at least decide to get out when he witnessed three fatal overdoses. Yeah, and he saved me. He took the bullet. Well, it'll be presented in court. It's up to the judge what he makes of it. But, you know, I think there's a fair chance that Lenny will get a light sentence on the dealing charges. And St. Hughes did say that he's going to make a full recovery. Oh, good. Thanks, Arch. Well, it wasn't exactly a textbook operation, was it? I'm sorry. Well, like I said to you before, Beth, there's always grey areas in undercover work, even in the outcome. But you've done really well. And D.F. Carter and Sergeant Wright have recommended you for the undercover operations course. You interested? Yeah, I'd love that. Thank you. Right, it's done. Um... Has Lenny been cautioned yet? No. Right, well, I'd like to do it, if that's all right. Yeah, sure. Thanks, sir. Yeah. I sent Katie some flowers. And breakfast is on me. That's what you look like in uniform. Mm -hmm. Now, between you and the nurses, I'm not sure I can cope. Get used to it, you'll be seeing it again. You promise? When I testify in court on your behalf. Testify? Joseph Semolina, I'm arresting you on suspicion of dealing in controlled substances. You do not have to say anything, but it may harm your defence if you do not mention when question something which you later rely on in court. Go to prison. You visit me, Beth. It won't work. You were a drug dealer. And I can't get past that. But I believe you can in the future. Good luck. Beth. Look, I didn't lie about everything. You are a great kisser. I didn't lie about everything either. You are too. I'll see you with God. Well done, Beth. Listen, you did the right thing, personally and professionally. Yeah. Come on. I'll buy you a cup of tea and some chocolate. DS Carter took care of that. Do you want one? <laughs> Next time on The Bill. She's cut her wrists. We could be looking at internet grooming. Oh, it's got all the hormones. It made me do things. Take my clothes off. Stand <laughs> The images, they can be hard to get rid of in your head. It needs to be done. Coming up. She's dead then. They don't send detectives around with good news, do they? No, I'm just following a lead. Trial and Retribution is next. Whilst over on ITV2, it's Colleen's Real Women. And on ITV4, vintage film and eyewitness accounts in Hitler in Colour, next.